just in the look and feel of the plugin. Uh, what we've seen in 4.1 with the, the newer themes, we're starting to see the inclusion of some jQuery UI theme uh, specific attributes, CSS settings actually in the Apex themes that affect that. So really, if, if you didn't notice, I mean, I think that the uh, plugin, the look and feel, actually works very well with the theme behind. Uh, so that's really nice that we're starting to see some of that integration. However, if you're using an older theme and or you simply don't agree that this looks quite right, that's fine. You can, of course, change the look and feel. What we've done is skin the plugin so that it uses jQuery UI themes to get its look and feel. So you can go to jQuery UI, uh, their website. They have lots of canned themes that you can look at. Of course, if you don't like any of those, you can just uh, download your own. You can create your own and download that instead. I'll show you a little bit of that here in a moment. I also wanted to point out that Google hosts a lot of these canned themes. Okay, now this is one of the major changes going from 4.0 to 4.1. I mentioned now that we're going to port this to 4.0 that I would talk about some of these differences. So let's let's touch on this now. Um, is it possible to specify the width of the columns? It appears that they are fixed only as the width of the column heading or title. We, we need to be able to specify a column be wider so that the data shows pro properly. Is that possible? Sure. Uh, actually, it is possible now. So let me just show you very briefly here. When When we inspect what gets added to the DOM and the plugin. Uh, you'll see that let me actually go down into the body. And here we have the different table data elements. Uh, they're given a class and we see column one, column two, column three, and so on. So targeting this particular class allows you to set the width of columns very explicitly. Um, so if you do have a need for that, then, then you can do that. Now, ultimately, what we're trying to achieve is uh, a very natural sort of uh, column width setting. You know, HTML, it just it renders, and, you know, oftentimes you don't want to set a width explicitly because different people have different size. Uh, monitors or different resolutions they're running and thus it's, it's a little better to leave it flexible and let the browser render it as it sees fit. However, I understand the need so that's why we added these classes and we will be making some changes in the next version of, uh, well, potential changes I should say. This is where I need one of those Oracle, uh, you know, standard uh, Warnings, you know, don't make any decisions based on what I say here in this meeting. But we will uh, potentially be integrating a UI grid into the plugin to deliver an even better uh, look and feel. Uh, it's something we're considering. So uh, stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, you can, of course, uh, target these classes. I'm not too sure if we need to do a demo of that, but it is possible uh, to do so. Great. Next question, uh, can we return multiple values from the LLV? Can we return multiple values? So there is a feature that we use uh, that allows you to map uh, additional. So, so here we're looking at four different columns. And of course, this ID, the first column is the return value. And traditionally, what happens when we select it, the hidden value behind the scenes has been mapped uh, you know, with, with that column. The plugin, one of the enhancements that was requested early on was the ability to do multiple item, you know, column to item mapping. So we do have that feature built in, and I'll do a demo of that a little later, if that's OK. This version here is where you would plug in the version for uh, jQuery UI, uh, literally just like this, 1.8.14 will give you the right version for Apex 4.1. And then you change this theme name here to make sure you get the right theme that you would like to use. So let me show you really quick jQuery UI's website. And what we have here is a tab for themes. And if you click this gallery tab, you'll see all of the canned themes that I was talking about. So you can use any of these very readily. Uh, I'm going to use UI Darkness just to give you an idea of how this works.
So I'm going to go edit our page, and I'm actually going into the page level template to do this change. I'll scroll down a bit, and here we're looking at the the header of the page. So uh, I'm I'm going to add the CSS file here so that it's used throughout the entire application. If you'd like to target just a page, you can use your page level settings and so on. But what I'm after is apparently something I did not include in my script. So let's just grab it from, we'll do a live edit. I'm going to copy this in. We'll, we'll see if uh, I entered that incorrectly. And I'm going to come, here's the head section from the page, and I'll come just below here and drop in this new CSS style sheet. So this is pointing to Google's files. As I mentioned, uh, you don't have to, to use external files. You can download your own, host them internally. The Google files, if you're open to allowing for it, are, are really performant. So I recommend you leverage them if possible. We're going for version 1.8.14. And the theme name I'm after is UI Darkness. Now, UI Darkness is, of course, two words. Whenever you have a theme that is two words, just separate them with a dash, not a space, a dash, and then finish the theme. We'll apply that change, rerun the page, and I can tell already that it worked just fine. We can see a slightly different look and feel. When I click on Open, it opens, and we're now using UI Darkness. So you can see quite a drastic look and feel, but maybe not one that fits with this uh, plugin or this, this Apex theme very well. So let's look through the themes here, the can themes, see if we can find a red. Here we go, Pepper Grinder. All right. So here's UI Darkness. Switch that to Pepper Grinder. Apply our change. Rerun our page. And that looks a little bit better when we open this up. This is Pepper Grinder. So as you can see, just by switching one file, a CSS file, you're able to drastically change the way in which the plugin looks when it opens, and even before it opens, just these buttons as well. In addition to changing the theme, the, the jQuery UI theme, we also have some global settings and instance settings that also affect the look and feel. So let's look at the global settings first. We have the image, uh, the loading image, and the effect speed. Notice that when I open the plugin, it sort of slides in the view, and it's currently doing that with the default setting. Going back to our plugin global settings, we're in the shared components plugins area again. We have effect speed here, and it defaults to normal. Let me show you slow. I'm going to return to this page. We'll apply that change. And I will refresh this page. And we'll open it up slow. So that's slow. And of course, if you, you have heavy users, you want to just skip right over to instant, open the plugin as fast as possible. The effects are always nice until it's in an application somebody's using daily. And now when we open it, it opens as fast as possible, just instantly opens up. So that's one setting you want to look at. Another is the loading image. Uh, you have your choice. You can use any of the default images. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but when I open the LOV, it's going very fast. Uh, uh, let me take you over to our demo site here where I've added a very strange query that just takes a while to load. Here we go. So you notice this loading image here. This is the default that we use in the plugin. And you can change that to uh, a number of different options that we've installed. Of course, if you'd like to override that and use a custom image, you can do that as well. Just switch to custom and then put in the path to the image and it'll use that when querying but before displaying the LOB results. So those are the global settings you might use to affect the look and feel. At the instance level, we have a couple more, such as maximum rows per page and show uh, null values as. So going back to edit the instance, the little item, we'll drill into that. 
and I'm just going to focus on settings here. And we see the options here. This is maximum rows per page. Defaults to 15. If you'd like to display, say, 50 rows per page, you can just bump that up to 50. Uh, the result set I'm working with is rather small, but you can imagine how that would affect plugin. And of course, we have show null values as. This is just the HTML equivalent of a space, but you can change that to, say, a dash if you like, or anything else you'd like to display for null. 